Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Lord of Match Show, episode 50. Uno! <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd's still ill. Yep. But it doesn't matter because it's going to be. We got, something, we got a good show in store for you today. You never even know what we're going to talk about. Well, for half the time. The first half, I have no idea. Yeah. The second true. half, it fireworks. <laughs> Wait, let me guess. Let me guess. I think you're going to talk about TV licenses. <laughs> Yes! Topic one is TV licenses. Bullshit. I hate it. And I think it's actually criminal. And I was, at one point in my career, I was tempted to take it to the court of justice. To career? Justice. Yeah. Not in your life. In no, your my career. career. My pro club's career. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, did you know your TV license goes to the BBC? Yeah, obviously. It doesn't go to ITV? No. Doesn't go to Channel 4? No. So... The BBC are effectively saying that they own the TV. Mm. They didn't invent the TV. No. George Sampson did. The dancer <laughs> from Britain's Got Talent. <laughs> I don't know why that haven't popped into my head, but that's wrong. They're saying they're effectively saying they own the TV. They they own the copyright for the TV. They invented the TV. I just think it's I think it's wrong. So why do ITV and Channel Four not challenge them? I don't know. Because no one can take down the BBC. What? <laughs> Pause. <laughs> I've tried a couple times. <laughs> you got a sick mind, you. No one can take down the BBC. <laughs> we got kids listening to this. But the price is going up. The price is going up. Oh my God, that's criminal. Let me read this excerpt from an article for you. You might need to speak up a little bit. How much is the BBC TV license fee and what does it fund? Oh my God. The TV license fee is currently £159 a year. Outrageous. Or £53.50 for black and white TVs. If anyone still uses them. <laughs> no one's rocking. No one is rocking a black, black and, and white, white TV. TV. Like That looks like a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> the ratio is 2-1. Or just 1-1. One, one. It's just a box. <laughs> Money raised from the license fee pays for BBC shows and services, including TV, radio, the BBC website, podcasts, iPlayer, and apps. From April 1st, it will go up to £169.50, a 6.6% rise. Mental. After being frozen for two years. <laughs> well, I don't know. Goody! Goody! Two years frozen at £159. Uh, the increase is based on the inflation figure for September 2023. I think just that alone, because R- Reform UK said they would get rid of the TV license. Yeah. So I think just the fact that it's hiking up might actually help Reform get a get bit more votes. votes. Yeah, there'll be because people are sick of paying the TV license. Yeah. Because apparently, I'm not sure how true this is. I got told that you can only get charged for not having a TV license if you are. S- no, you can only get charged by have for a TV license if you are seen watching a TV. They have to catch you in the act. They have to catch you in the act. Like, so someone could say, oh, I'm from the TV license company. Can I come in? And you can just say no. And yeah, the they door. don't have a warrant. No, they don't have a warrant at all. Exactly. But you can say no and, and yeah. just push them away. Yeah. Which is kind of odd. I don't think most people know that, though. I think they do. And I think that's why they're raising the price. Because I feel like year on year... They're getting less people paying. Less it. people are paying, hundred percent. We don't watch TV at all. We have a TV, but we've n- we don't even have a free view box. No, we just watch YouTube and we, Netflix. Yeah, we just watch YouTube and Netflix. We should don't need a TV license for. No. Uh, the BBC's total income from the license fee was three point seven four billion in twenty twenty three. Where is that money going? Well, no, no, honestly, where is that money going? Because that the best show of the year last year on the BBC was The Traitors. Yeah, that ain't costing any more. Then was that not ITV? Was that, that was ITV? ITV? Claudia Winkleman's ITV. Oh my isn't she? god! No, no, no! Surely that was BBC. No, I yeah, it was. It, it was the BBC because they put them on the BBC podcast after. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty I sure. I really thought it was ITV, but yeah. Claudia Winkleman right. jumps around. She's on Channel Four Big Brother. Yeah, true. She just hops um, and skirts. Yeah, BBC One. Yeah. yeah, so that show, I guarantee, is not costed more than a million. No, definitely not. Like where <laughs> and they made three point something billion. Three point seven four billion. Uh it accounted for sixty five percent of the BBC's total income, which was five point seven three billion. All so if you get rid of T V licenses, the BBC would be decimated. Yeah, good. 
I think they should have been gone a long time ago. I feel like everything's just becoming more corrupt. No, no, let's stop talking there because I, this is going to be a happy pod. Well, Diddy's house got raided. Oh, yeah, shit. I wonder what's going to happen with that in Miami and in LA. Yeah, he's been fleeing the country. P. Diddy did not kill himself. Yeah, do you reckon that's what's going to happen? I, I reckon that's... Oh, I saw something crazy, like actually wild, but I want to save it for a future talk. Okay. And I want to run it past you first because I reckon if I say it, you'll just go, no, that'll get us banned. <laughs> yeah, probably will. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think he's fleeing to uh, Epstein's Island. Oh, wow. They won't look there. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if your house got raided? Like, like you know, you've done that. Like, I'm not saying Diddy's done nothing. I don't know what Diddy's done. But if you've done Diddy's nothing. Diddy's done something. Yeah. He's probably done something, to be fair. He, but have you done... seen the text between him and Kanye? No. Did he send him a text like last year, two years ago, being like, when I land in the USA, I'm going to meet you face to face. And Kanye West just says, like, N word, all in capitals. And just goes, fuck you. Yeah. I ain't meeting you at all. You're a nonce or something like that. Like, really? you're a pedo. Damn. Something like that. But I think it's, I feel like it's well known in the industry. Like, everyone knows each other's business. Mm. Like, yeah, we, if one goes down, they're going to bring them all. I was about to make a joke there. I was well, going to just drag someone's name into the dirt. We're not doing that. <laughs> no, like, doing I, that. like, just completely fake. I was going to say, like, how a famous TikToker we know is, like, a nonce, but I wouldn't... I wouldn't. No, <laughs> just catch us on <laughs> and they just get cancelled. <laughs> but what would you do if your house got raided? Well, if I didn't do anything wrong, I'd just go... <laughs> It'd be the most stressful situation in the world. Yeah. I mean, we live with Gwion, yeah. so it looks like the house has been raided non-stop. No, but I came back the other day and said it was filthy, and both of you looked around like, was it? And I'm not joking, I was like... Yeah, because when you went away, I cleaned every inch of this place because my parents were here and I looked around and I was like, oh my God, it's so dirty. So I, I like hoovered all the things. I got a soot thing on the side, did all the skirting boards. That was a double breeze. You just swallowed your thought. <laughs> I cleaned the tap with a fucking toothbrush. Yeah. Bleached everything, cleaned all. So, and then I was gone because I went to the Maldives. If anyone doesn't know, I went to the Maldives. And then you came back. So what my thought was, Guillaume maybe had a little house party. No. Nah. <laughs> Let's extinguish that. But look under that sofa. Fuck, you know. And then there's a chip. <laughs> there's a chip under this one. A chip? I think so. Yeah, I could see a little bit of a chip. I, I remember when it was just, I was home alone for like a week, I think. Yeah. In the summer. And I found a piece of chicken in one of the rugs on the couch. A hot, a piece of chicken. It, and was it was squeeze. If it wasn't cold, it would have been delicious, but had to eat that shit. <laughs> you really know that your boss. I'm still ill and I'm fighting every day. <laughs> but I want you to do pick up your whiteboard i want you to do i want you to do pick up the whiteboard whiteboard acquired i would probably go um longitude a longitude instead of latitude and i'm gonna ask you to rank these seven beers oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay oh, yeah, okay oh, yeah, oh, yeah. okay from one to seven yeah okay we've got oh shit uh, do you want to uh, do you want to blind rank or do you want to um oh, I need to just get them all and then do your list let's let me Blind rank and then adjust. Yeah, let me blind rank and okay, adjust. Okay, let me say it as if it's a talk. Okay. I want you to rank these seven beers. Oh! <laughs> I want you to rank these beers from one to seven. Come on, I am a beer drinker. Okay, we've got Madri. I've, that is, Madri's so good. I think it's one of the better ones, yeah. Madri's so good. I, I'm i actually going to put that two. Okay. Madri. Okay. Corona. My, 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 my <sighs> corona. See Corona in 2020, so refreshing. Yeah. Then there was something about it. I feel like you could only drink Corona in the sun, not the yeah, summer. Just, the oh, really? sun. You can't drink it in the evening, like a, like a night time in the summer. Yeah. I feel like you have to be the Middle sun the has day. to be direct on you. <laughs> <laughs> I said direct. Direct. I'm gonna put that as a five. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's quite low. Yeah. Uh, Estrella, Estrella. Oh, now that is so good. Really? Oh man, yeah, that might be that might be number one for me. Really? Yeah. Is that is that a bad shout? 
No, I'm going to put that as... I think he's worse than Madri, in my opinion. Do you think? I think so. Australia just... I love Madri. I think Madri's... Differently. I think I would have put Madri one, I reckon. For me. For me. Oh. Madri one and Corona two are the only two beers I really yeah, don't uh, mind. Okay, I'm going to put Australia one, yeah. but then I'm going to put like... Well, you can adjust it later on. Okay, I'll adjust it later on. Foster's. <laughs> my granddad loves Foster's liquid piss and he just has it in his fridge and he's like oh do you want a beer and I'm like yeah open up the fridge and it's like it's like one of those like <laughs> fridges where it's just filled yeah like neatly orderly of Foster's Foster's could potentially be the worst on there I'm have gonna... you seen the Foster's cans that Ricky Gervais drinks when he does his live show they're the ones they're that... like wide and fat yeah, and they're... stubby and they're the ones my granddad has yeah I've never seen them like that absolutely gross um Trying to think of all the beers. I, I'm going to put that at seven right now. Yeah. Foster's. All right, cool. My f- my first drink at a pub was a Foster's as well. And how old were you? 18. Really? Yeah, because I, di- I didn't drink half. My- I didn't go out on my 18th birthday. I didn't drink. I had champagne and shit. That's drinking. Yeah, but like at the pub, my first order, because I didn't know any beer. I didn't know what it was. Foster's. I almost threw up when we went to O'Neill's the other day, by the way. Why? Because Guion... Ordered, what is it? Oh, a when it's got apple in it, cider. Cider. Magnus. He, he ordered a Magnus, and I just downed it. Magnus is all right. And I went, no, I can't stand that piss. That that Magnus cider, any of that shit is just wild. Really? Yeah. Be a man. Don't don't drink that. <laughs> okay. Next. Um, I don't know if this is actually a beer. I've never looked up whether Water. it's a beer. No, no. <laughs> Volvic Spark. <laughs> Guinness. I don't know if Guinness is a beer That's or... It's a, yeah, it's a stout. Yeah, so. we're doing lagers. But we're inclu- no, we're including Guinness in this. Guinness? So it's, it's basically just beverages. But the thing is... Guinness- Actually, no, I'll swap it. 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 I don't know if you've had this, but Asahi. Oh, Asahi's three. Asahi's absolutely stunning. Asahi... Oh. Yeah, that my three could have... Be a bit jumbled round, you know. So what? You got two left then? Yeah. At the moment, I got Australia. Spelled wrong. Madri, <laughs> Asahi, Rona, Frosters. Frosters. <laughs> Frosties. <laughs> That's I've definitely why Frosters. you put it. Yeah. I've actually put Frosters. It's called Fosters. Yeah. Yes. There's no R. Jesus. <laughs> I bet you put Fosters now. F O S T. F O S T E R S. Yep. Okay. Uh, Peroni. Peroni's decent. Peroni's decent. That's a nice. If you drink, like, I feel like when you're eating, that's a nice pint to have. Yeah, that's better than a Rona. It's not as good as an Asahi. I'm gonna put Peroni. And then the last one is Amstel. Yeah. It's a pretty strong list. I'm not gonna lie. That is actually. I've actually done this quite well. Amstel. I'm still breathing. Is that how you spell no. I'm still? <laughs> <laughs> that is I'm still breathing. Uh, it's A M S T E L. Yeah, T E L. That is actually a decent list. Yeah. I that, wonder if people would agree or disagree or. I will. Oh, see, I really like Madri. I, I, I'll probably put Madri first. Really? Yeah. Don't, so I, don't just give in to peer pressure. No, no. But I had one the other day and it's the first beer I've had at the pub since um, Christmas Eve. Mm. And it felt... Oh, shit. You're an idiot. What? You were doing no beer 2024. 2024 yeah, but I've also made a rule of myself that if the football's on, I'm allowed to. Win. I'm allowed to. Because it's the, it's the fucking Euros. Yeah. I, did, I didn't go through my head when I watched. I, I'm only going to drink beer if it's... During, yeah. Like within the ninety minutes that within the ninety minutes, I can't. Not after, not before. N- maybe after, but not before. No, because I don't think if if anything happens after the game, no, I don't think we'd carry on drinking beer. True, true. Okay then. So you should make it Ma- just maybe, in the ninety no, minutes. Okay, from not the, in added time from either. the starting lineup. <laughs> <laughs> from the national anthem. No, I'm gonna do from the starting lineup. I'll drink beer. <laughs> but an so- hour pre-game. <laughs> I saw he's so good though. Well, if he goes to penalty, he should be battered. <laughs> the, have you had? When was the last time you had Asahi? Quite a while ago. Because they sell Asahi uh, in uh, in September in a curry house, I think. Oh, Asahi's in a curry house. Yeah. Okay, fusion. They normally sell Cobra and shit. Yeah. But, but Asahi's a different. It's a different 
um, ingredients. It's Japanese, isn't it? Yeah, and it's like a different ingredients. Like they don't use uh, wheat. They use, I might be completely wrong, they use barley. Why? Yeah. Or something like that. I don't know, I've never but Googled it's, it to it's be honest. Actually, but. my first Asahi was in lockdown and I, I was like hooked, hooked on it. Beautiful. <laughs> Official list. Madri, Estrella, Asahi, Peroni, Rona, Amstel, Fosters, Bong. Write in the comments your order from one to seven. <laughs> um, yeah, have you seen that? Well, two things actually. Two one, glasses of milk, please. We're, <laughs> we're a bit late to the Oscars. <laughs> but Oscars? That was like seven weeks ago. No, it was March 9th. Exactly. So like two weeks ago. So we are a bit late. But well, this is coming out next week. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, true. Uh, Killian won. Killian did win. Did you think that was... And Oppenheimer won. That were the only two I went to speak about, Killian and Oppenheimer. Um... Yeah, I feel like there wasn't that many. I didn't really like Oppenheimer. What? Yeah. I mean, it was a good film. It was really good in cinema, but I feel like you couldn't watch that at home. You'd have to watch it in the correct setting. Yeah, but I feel like that's what films are made for. They're made for the cinema. Mm. They're not made to be watched at home. That's all the noobs who think that streaming is the best form of... They're made to be watched. I don't know about that. On the biggest screen possible. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Well, if people like you who don't keep cinema no, alive. No, because... No, I prefer the cinema 100%. But then again, I feel like enjoying a film afterwards on DVD, streaming it just at home. Rewatchability. Yeah, the rewatchability has got to be huge. And like... Because I went to Maldives. Don't know. If, <laughs> you know. Oppenheimer was on the plane. Yeah. And was I said, it? I thought he was dead. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I just looked at it and I was like, I just can't. I just I just don't want to watch that. It is an intense, slow burn, three hour film. I don't think it's yeah. designed to necessarily be rewatched though. It's really not his best film. No, it I don't think really it's best. isn't. And I the the thing that I hate about film nowadays is like and the whole film Twitter, film TikTok is like everyone says it's the best thing ever. Like, I follow this guy, I'm not going to say his name, but he he goes to a lot of the premieres. Yeah. And he says everything, that he, he rates it so highly, the best thing ever, there's so much hype to it. And I'm like, this film will be forgotten in a year. I'm not saying Oppenheimer will, because that no, is a good Oppenheimer film. Won't. Yeah. Was, uh, that, is, that was a good film. But like, there's so many, there's so much shit that comes out now that everyone says is amazing and you just completely forget about it. Like, what the, like, Films need to be simple as well. That is weird that you say that. I had that thought. I basically, I watched, um, when was this? This wasn't last night. Monday night? What day is it? <laughs> it's Friday. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday, buddy. Come on. <laughs> laugh and then got it wrong twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, on Monday night, I watched Rope. Have you ever heard of Rope? No. So it's by Alfred Hitchcock. Right. 80 minute film set in one room hmm. with... There's only four visible cuts throughout the whole film. Right. And it's 80 minutes long. Right, right. He like walks into, pe- the camera goes into someone's back. Back and, and cuts, then, yeah. Um, but that came out in 1948 with Jimmy Stewart, who's, it's a wonderful life, same guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just thinking, these films have such a legacy. Yep. And they're just so unique. Yep. And I was just trying to think of films in the last 10 years that I've watched that I think someone will want to put on in 2,210. Yep. And I struggle. I think Interstellar is the one that kept coming to my yeah, brain as the most impactful, like just the score, everything. But there's not like Vertigo, Rope, It's a Wonderful Life. Have you seen um, Doctor Strange Love and How I Learned to Love the Atomic Bomb? No, See, but I've that, seen clips of it when I know the, oh, the same actor plays three guys. Yeah. but And he does, he's in the wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> the start with. But it's just like... So, like, because that the night I watched Doctor Strange Love, I watched an Australian film with, uh, who's Thor? Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. I watched that before, like, <coughs> it was like one of his first films, really shitty film. Hmm. And I, after watching like five minutes of Doctor Strange Love, I'm like, this is just, you just, everything about it is so much better. And I'm hmm. like, everything that comes out today is mostly because the business is profitable. <laughs> Yeah, true. But I don't think... This is the problem I have with film, Twitter, film, TikTok, whatever. Or not even that, just the general general audiences. is Not every film is made to be 
amazing and to win awards and to be like 100% on Rotten yeah. Tomatoes. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with a film being 60%. slocky and shit. Like, yeah. Plus a film could be 40% and be someone's favorite film. Yeah, Baywatch. <laughs> That film is that so is enjoyable. I know it's no, shit, it is a good but it's film. so it's enjoyable to watch. And do you know what I, films I like? I really like John, John Wick. Yeah, they're but they're actually... No, no, they're rated yeah, so highly. That's what I mean. They're rated so highly, but they're just... They're not designed to win an Oscar. No, but like it, like you said, in 100 years' time, that like people will be like, they will just be a film. Yeah. It's because... John I Wick is more on that side than that side, though. Is, like, I feel like it will have more of a legacy it's because than because... Films now cost so much money; they need so much hype to to do it, and it's it's kind of tragic because you can be now someone like you or I and make a film, and it will absolutely flop because there's no hype around it. I feel like marketing is a huge part to a film. Yeah, hundred percent. Huge yeah. part. You know, we watched Hypnotic with Ben Affleck. Uh, that was shocking. Yeah, but shocking. That had like a sixty mil budget and made five mil. Yeah. Because like the the distribution company just gave up with it and just didn't even promote it. Like no one knew it was on. <laughs> I only knew it was on because I check every other day like what's coming, yeah. what's on. What's, what's popping? Like there was only like one screening of it, and we went to it, and yeah, it, was it wasn't very really, good. really, really bad. Yeah, and it just makes me laugh whenever I see someone say this is the best film of all time. Like Oppenheimer came out, and everyone was saying how good it was, and then I got so underwhelmed with it. Really? I was like, this is not the best film of all... There's no... Kung Fu Hustle is better than that. No, it's... <laughs> <laughs> if anyone says, oh, Oppen- Oppenheimer, it's not... Kung Fu Hustle. Kung, Kung Fu, Fu Hustle. Hustle. Kung Fu Hustle is a A car. fantastic comedy. <laughs> that but like that legacy car. is... That legacy of that film sticks yeah. around. But like even like films that do get made with a much smaller budget, but get well known, like After Sun. Yeah, had like a one mil budget or whatever. That was great, but I, I still, still don't, don't think know. it will have the legacy of like Vertigo. Or, nope. Oh, but I God guess no. they're made by Hitchcock, so it's like yeah, it's Hitchcock's legacy, mm-hmm. maybe more so than the films and Jimmy Stewart. Yeah, it's. I, I think as well, if you want to make a legacy, you have to make a few films that are bangers. Yeah, you have to go on a run. If like I'll, Denis Villeneuve. Yeah, I'll, his run right now is crazy. Have you seen it? Yeah, he's he's made a couple. Enemy, Prisoners, yeah. Sicario, Blade Runner twenty forty seven. Dune Part 1, Dune Part 2, Arrival. That's his run of like eight films in a row. But his films are very... Sci-fi god. Yeah, like you got to be a sci-fi person for that. They are fantastic though. I'm not the biggest sci-fi fan. I like I like realism in film. I think that's what I've discovered. But you hated Oppenheimer. It's about a real man. Op- yeah, Oppenheimer was boring. <laughs> boring? Yeah, boring. The last, after the, uh, as soon as the bomb went off, it was really, really boring. Do you know? I think Rami Malek's scenes were good. Fell Where asleep. He... I didn't really see much of him. I, the only scene I saw, I saw him once in the film. Well, he was only in it, like at the end, pretty much. What? And he got nominated for an Oscar. Rami Malek. Yeah. No. Oh, I thought he got nominated for an Oscar for that. No, Downey Jr. won. Yeah, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, but I felt I was asleep to most of them scenes. Damn. Do you prefer Barbie? <laughs> no, I do like I'm just Ken. No, that's funny. <laughs> that is funny. And they're making Happy Gilmore too. No, fuck off. Are they actually? Yeah, I thought you might have known that. They're I making Happy Gilmore too. That is absolutely class. What? How are they going to do it? Though? I, I think he's going to be like uh, a retired golfer who like did 30 years of tour and pro golf or whatever. And then he's called out of retirement by that someone. That's what I think they'll do. But I don't, I, I don't know for sure. What I think a film. Shooter might still be going <laughs> and they'll ignite like a old man rivalry against <laughs> Shooter McGavin. <laughs> oh, I fucking love that. I love that. But then loads of people say, like, not everything needs a sequel. Beetlejuice 2 comes out this year. What's Beetlejuice? I've heard of that. With Michael Keaton. Oh, no, I've never seen that. Um, really? no, well, no. they're bringing out a second one, like, General Tagers in it and stuff. But, like, that's another 90s film. Yeah. Maybe it was 80s. No, I think it's 90s. But they're saying, like, everything doesn't need a sequel. But I actually would watch A Happy Gilmore 2. Oh, 100% I'd watch it. It would be on Netflix, though, because of Adam Sandler's deal. Oh, shit. His 250 million deal with Netflix. And I feel like that would be good. Yeah. I I feel like when a film is that good, like Dumber and Dumber, Dumber and Dumber 2 is just equally as good. I thought everyone hated it. I found it really good. Like, I was like, it's it's not as good as the first one, no chance. No. But it's like not a bad film. Yeah. I think if you revisit something a lot later, 
where it's very much a different story. Yeah. I'm more inclined to watch. Like Top Gun Maverick. So good. Because it was 30 years after. Yeah. It felt like... But like if they made one straight after, they wouldn't have really known what to do. Mm -hmm. But because he's much older, retired, Had whatever. A thought. It was a much better story. Mm -hmm. I think Adam... That's one of... I think that is Adam Sandler's best film in my eyes. Punch Drunk Love. I haven't seen that. Yeah. Hubie Dubois. <laughs> Hubie Dubois. <laughs> Hubie Hello. So basically when... Oh, <laughs> Uncut Gems is... Yeah, I haven't seen that. I've been meaning to see That's it, his fair. best performance. Yeah. But I don't know if it's... Yeah. Happy Gilmore was great. He's in so many good films and so many absolutely terrible ones. This is girl language, what girls say and what they actually mean. Let me hear him. If she shows you her list of baby names on her phone, what do you think that means? Uh, that she's trying to trap you? <laughs> Get a prenup. <laughs> I think that means that she wants to have your babies... Spot on. And think she'll be a good father. Absolutely. Or the father that stepped up. <laughs> <laughs> if she posts a bomb ass photo on her Insta story with a song, what does that mean? I find that quite goofy when Gif. people put the songs attached to the Instagram. No, I haven't caught up to that yet. You do not. <laughs> ha! Way to hell! <laughs> <laughs> it describes her current situation. For example, thank you, next, <laughs> with the nail emoji. Just taking out the trash. <laughs> I hate you so much. It's not a girl language, Lloyd, I'm telling you that. <laughs> I think it means that they love you, but they're just annoyed at you. Why are you playing with your legs? <laughs> Why are you playing with your legs? I think they, I think it's, girls are very extreme. So they'll say, if they actually like you, they'll say that they hate you because it affects them so much more. Exactly. I hate you so much means I hate how much I like you. Yeah. You got on. it. Okay. Well, it depends. If it's like, if they send that on email because they've blocked you on everything else, then they probably do hate you. Email? Yeah. If, they, if you're still emailing them because they blocked you on everything else, they probably do hate you. <laughs> I had a bank transaction for 1P saying, add me back. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> I hope you're happy with her I hope your life is a living hell <laughs> I hope she cheats <laughs> Takes all your money <laughs> Takes the kids <laughs> Makes you pay I was about to say student loan What's it called? <laughs> Child support <laughs> is it? Student loan It says here A small part of me hopes you get an STD Oh god <laughs> Maybe a bit larger than a small part <laughs> Okay if a girl messaged you saying, sorry, I just saw this. They saw it ages ago. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest play in the book. For what do you mean saw this? Maybe if you say you were busy doing something and you didn't have your phone, that's more of an excuse. Nah, sorry, I just saw this. They saw this. You're just a forgettable priority. Yeah. It's a cold world out there, fellas. Complete juxtaposition. Forgettable priority. Yes. How can you be a priority... You're a and be forgettable because you're that's like a pathetic fallacy <laughs> <laughs> I know our teacher's watching this like hey, yes <laughs> getting it all wrong <laughs> okay if they say okay 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 I don't know what, what do you mean give me some context so you say she's just a friend oh well that just means they don't believe you yeah yeah they're annoyed. Someone said they're eye rolling themselves into the ground. How fucking <laughs> stupid you are. <laughs> I guess that does make sense. I'll let you know. Yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't even bother. You need to get through your thick skull that she's never letting you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's never letting you know. She's never going to tell you the, the day that you can meet up. Nah. She never. says, yeah, I'm a bit busy at the moment. I'll let you know. Or just ASAP. Yeah. It's never. It's soon never happened. It's the longest time, the longest wait in history. <laughs> if she can't wait to tell you something that happened in the girls group chat. Then she's a drama queen. <gasps> no, but I feel like all girlfriends run to their boyfriend to spill the tea because they love gossiping with boys to get their perception. Yeah, but if it, they're not your boyfriend or girlfriend perception get their perspective <laughs> if they're not oh i don't know i don't know why they'd be so quick to snitch on their friend's business to you if you're not boyfriend girlfriend she wants you 
She's telling you to go tea. To make you feel involved. Yeah. And I will. I sit there and say, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> you can run to Papa. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I have the most attractive genes in the UK. Oh, is this a TikTok? No, I just do. <laughs> <laughs> just say your forehead says that. No, yeah, come I'm on. I'm not going to offend you. Come on. Just say your forehead says your big ass head shape says otherwise. That's so rude. Look. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They asked men in the UK what they find most attractive about women. Yeah. What do you think the first one was? Eyes. Mm-mm. Smile. Kind of, but eyes isn't even on the list. Eyes isn't on the list. For the top five. Top five things they find most attractive. Uh, smile. Oh, did I just say that? <laughs> <laughs> lips. Lips. 93% of men said lips are the most attractive feature. 93? 93. Like they asked men the top 10 and lips came up. 93% of them yeah. included it. Yeah. But 52% of men said they like lip filler. Lip filler? Yeah. Was this exclusively done in Merseyside? <laughs> <laughs> Can you guess the second one? If the first one was lips. Well, it depends. Like most men are dogs. How do like, like any part of a body? It's just any part. Bum. Nope. Bum didn't make the top five. Bum did not make the top five. Boobs. Nope. Boobs didn't make the top five. Somehow. Well done men. <laughs> We're not being absolute dogs. But if the first one was lips. And eyes isn't on the list. What was the second one? Nose. No, it's teeth. Yeah, that makes sense. Having nice 70... <laughs> having nice? Having 70 teeth. 74% <laughs> of Brits say teeth are hella attractive. It's ironic. The Brits <laughs> love teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's three more. There's three more. But I've added a new stat that I found really funny. Okay. Okay. The third one with 58% of Britons... Sorry. With 58% of Brits saying they like a female with a high-pitched voice. Really? They said having a higher-pitched voice is more attractive. Uh, yeah, I guess. Would you prefer... Good morning... <coughs> Wait. <laughs> Would you prefer... Good morning, Lloyd. <laughs> or a, or a mate. Good morning. Probably the first one if it's between those there two. There we go. But 39% of men said that. I don't think I would have put that on the list. Like, that doesn't really come voice, to... Voice, no. No. Oh no, that was 58%, sorry. 39% of men said they think having a symmetrical face is the best looking feature. How niche are the men getting when they say this? I don't know. 39% of them thought about symmetrical faces. Yeah. I don't believe that. <laughs> How symmetrical is your face? I don't know. Should How we, do I check? We, I'm pretty sure you can do it on Snapchat. What, it just flips around? But I just took a picture of me. Uh, and this one's funny. It's not a uh, a feature, but they ask Brits what they find attractive in women. Mm. And 5.2% of people say Brits like a giver. What do they mean by that? Well, I typed in, this is my separate research. Yeah. How many men in the UK like being pegged back from behind? Jesus Christ. And it came back with 5.2%. <laughs> So they do like a giver. Oh my God. 5%. The Sun newspaper released the top 10 most faithful and least faithful places in the UK. Very accurate. The Sun. <laughs> Why do you think the most faithful places? And you can be specific. Somewhere kind of boring. Okay. Like um, maybe like a... Uh, Farming area, maybe? Nah. Maybe Gloucester? They're all slags down there. Really? They get on with it. They know what they're doing. Oh, damn. I'm going to say Shropshire. I think that's close to where this is, but it's Bolton. No, I think Bolton's a bit further up. Bolton's the most loyal place. With 0.3% of the population cheating. Wow, 0. Point... What? Is that it? That's it. The rest of them just don't admit it. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely not admitting it. This proves they don't admit it. Because Birkenhead in Merseyside is the third most loyal place in the country. Really? 
with 0.46% of cheaters. Well, maybe all the lower ones in Merseyside live in one place. Or they just moved out of Liverpool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the top 10 least faithful places. Yep. 10, Carlisle. Yep. Don't know what the fuck goes on in Carlisle, to be fair. Nothing. That's why they have to entertain others. <laughs> Worcestershire. Yep. Kind of makes sense. Where's that? Uh, Midlands. Again, I would cheat as well. <laughs> Derby. Yeah, Midlands. With 6.8% of people cheating. In all of Derby. And that's eighth place. Damn. And then 765 is Portsmouth, Newcastle, and then Litchfield. Where's Litchfield? Litchfield. But Litchfield has a measly 6.8% of people cheating. Damn. Their population is probably like 100 as well. The population of Litchfield is... Oh, wait, you said 100 people? Yeah. <laughs> no, the population is 2,574. So not much then? Not that much at all. In fourth place, we're racking up big numbers now. Nottingham. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes so yeah, much Trent. sense. Trent. Trent, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait, Coventry isn't on it. <laughs> oh, damn. They're lying. Yeah, they're lying. It's because they're currently cheating. It's just their own country. <laughs> they're excluded. Cover excluded. Yeah, they couldn't do the... the they couldn't do the flipping questionnaire because they were too busy cheating <laughs> <laughs> okay number three where do you think it is somewhere in london no close brighton okay They're getting down and dirty with it what do you mean by that <laughs> number two chester 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 has 6.88 percent of the population cheating that's crazy that is wild number one I'm going to guess it. Surprised me. Is it north or south? South. Really? Yes, sir. Don't say Bournemouth. No. You know what? Bournemouth and Paul are in the top 10 most faithful places. Really? Yeah. So in Bournemouth, 0.47% of people cheat. Yeah. And in Paul, 0.59% of people cheat. Damn. Respect down on the coast. <laughs> um, but number one. Cornwall. That's not a town. Or a city. <laughs> Just a massive, <laughs> massive uh, county. Say uh, Truro. Truro? No, it's Bath. Bath? Just up the road. 6.89% of the population cheat. And there's 8.3k people living there. Damn. We got a friend who lives in Bath. Yeah, and he's a big part of <laughs> why. It makes sense. <laughs> no, <we're joking>. <laughs> <laughs> Worst dad jokes of all time, go. I went into Burger King today and the lady serving had a badge on her left breast that said Pat. <laughs> Stop. To cut a long story short, I'm now banned from Burger King. <laughs> That's my nan's name. <laughs> what did Simba say to the slow bus driver? What? Mufasa, <laughs> Mufasa. Mufasa. Mufasa, Mufasa. I went to the doctor today and he said, don't eat anything fatty. I said, what, like sweets? He said, no fatty, just don't <laughs> eat anything. <laughs> oh, <that's> so good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I went into McDonald's and the cashier said, <laughs> <laughs> I just pull myself together. Okay. I went into McDonald's and the cashier <laughs> Hey, wait, wait. I went into McDonald's and they cash... I went into McDonald's and the cashier said to me, may I take your order? <laughs> I said, no, it's mine. <laughs> I got fired from the sp... Oh, God. <laughs> I got fired from the sperm bank yesterday. Uh -huh. Apparently, you're not allowed to nudge your coworker and go, get a load of this guy every time someone <laughs> walks in. <laughs> that is so good. <sighs> get a load of this guy. I was chatting up this blind girl and it was going so well until she left me on foul. <laughs> 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 
My wife just put on her new dress and then told me to zip it. <laughs> I have no idea what I did wrong. I didn't even say anything. <laughs> oh, that is so good. Why should you wear glasses in maths class? Why? Because it helps with division. That was so, <laughs> so shit. Oh, God. <laughs> Give a man a fish and I'll eat for a day. Teach a man how to fish and I'll waste all his money on some goofy equipment. <laughs> and hold a picture like this. Yeah. <laughs> on one knee. <laughs> Have you heard about the guy that teaches you to fart in public? No. No, he's a private tutor. <laughs> What do you want to comment? Uh, green pillow. Green pillow. I just comment anything you want. Yeah, comment mm. what you want us to discuss. Mm. We Topics reply to wise. every single one. Yep. And like the video, subscribe. Five stars on Spotify. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Everything, everything. Follow on everything. Then I'll just go. And then we'll see you in episode fifty-two. Jesus. Peace. <laughs>